my uh, experience, inspiration about how we can use machine learning uh, to enable the fashion industry. So today, my topic is when machine learning meets fashion. My name is Celine Xu. I'm an, sorry. So I'm a lead data scientist from H&M Group. I'm also a big fashion fan since early age. So I have a big dream to bring machine learning close to the fashion. Let the fashion actually leverage what machine capable of and also bring fashion close to machine learning engineering group. Let engineer understand how complexity fashion could be and enable to uh, leverage the capability. So uh, the first things I want to give a little bit brief introduction about H&M group. So I guess everyone know H&M as a um, uh, fashion brand and we find in 1947 since now, we have been more than 70 years uh, old. Uh, today, with more than 12 established brands, including Kors, Arquette, The Other Story, Monkey, we try to enable uh, all the design products available for the people around the world. Uh, the organization I see uh, is a small organization, but we have established for 150, more than 150 machine learning engineer and data scientists together, and we built more than 30 end-to-end machine learning product, and uh, more than six of them already uh, scaled globally. So here comes the key takeaway, part one. It will be a little bit controversial. First, I would say use machine learning to forecast fashion trends is hard. It may not work. Second, beware of the limitation of image recognition. Third. Do not focus on matching individual item from street style to store format, which means you would take some picture from um, uh, social media and match for the pin uh, information from company is really hard. Last but not least, do not limit the customer to a single fashion style. They deserve more. Why I'm saying that uh, fashion trends is a little bit hard to predict. That because I see some the fundamental conflict between the essence from fashion and machine learning. Uh, let's elaborate. So what is the essence of fashion? According to Wikipedia, fashion is a form of self-expression and aut autonomy uh, at the particular time and space and in a specific context. It's including clothing, food, well, lifestyle, accessory, makeup, high style, and bod even body posture. And what is the fashion trends? It's a specific style and expression distribute a population at a given period of location. The catch here is fashion is subjective. It's about change. It's about innovation. It's affect the factor, affect the fashion uh, in the human life, which is really hard to capture in the statistic format. At the same time, fashion product compared to other product in food industry, grocery industry, in terms of the style, it's really vague and hard to design. And to simplify, we will only focus on ready-to-wear garment sector uh, today. And what about the machine learning? And for me, machine learning is just about build a statistic model and based on sample data to make a conclusion or prediction. The machine learning is really good at doing the mass calculation to calculate probability in future what will happen, which means machine learning is really good at to predict certainty instead of uncertainty. That's why in machine learning, we have uncertainty represented by standard deviation. At the same time, we always have this assumption that history will happen again. Otherwise, the machine learning will not work. However, because fashion is about innovation, is about change. So if something never ever happened again, how we can use the machine learning, use the historical data to predict? Last but not least, everyone before me already mentioned, machine learning is always biased by the uh, data, sample data we actually choose. So, uh, 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 in, uh, in able to uh, make the comparison more clear, I just want to make a comparison together. So first, uh, fashion is about change, it's about innovation, it's about uncertainty. However, machine learning is really good at calculate the certainty instead of 
uncertainty. Second, fashion style is vague. It's about the story. It's about the feeling. It's a subjective individual at a certain time. However, machine learning is about formula. We need to quantify a certain concept uh, from the business problem into a statistic model. And also, we need to agree with that logic and use it into the prediction, which is really hard. The last thing is fashion uh, from fashion industry. Fashion is actually defined, or long-term fashion trends is actually defined by a small group of people, like Anna Winter from Vogue, like really uh, luxury goods, runway show, instead of the social media. Yes, uh, and uh, machine learning is really good at learning mass market and understand mass data, what is in common. So the, the, uh, the point here is, if we already know where to look at, why we need to still look at the mass uh, social media? If those uh, comparisons not convincing you, you still want to do uh, fashion forecasting, then there are some questions you need to ask yourself when you do the fashion forecasting. First is where does your data source come from to train the model and who labeled the data and uh, how you label the data. Why I'm saying this, if you want to do the fashion forecasting for helping your designer to design next best cell design, whether or not you actually use the amateur blogger's uh, statement to a fashion feature, or if you want to help your customer to find what is relevant for their search criteria, whether or not you actually use your engineering tagging data for support that purpose. Second, can you do anything after you knowing the forecasting? This is crucial. Uh, statistically, in social media, we can predict the trends. Most of time is only last three to five months. However, a lot of companies have this production planning more than six months. So which means after you know the three to five months forecasting, you can't do anything about uh, redesign your product and how you can use that prediction. Last but not least, I feel like uh, machine learning is about a, a, a little bit overhyped in some sense. So it's a time to rethink. Sometimes we need to use the human to do the forecasting. Let use the co-creation to do the recommendation instead of uh, really want the machine to do the recommendation. Uh, basically, the last word is let machine do what they're good at and let people do what they're good at. Then what? Is that machine learning not useful for fashion? No, not at all. Because fashion is about self-expression. It's about um, community engagement, which is a long-term thing. That's why if we can actually use machine to predict long-term community engagement, we can have better chance to give them what they're relevant to their value. Second, we always see some trends will come back in five years, 10 years, but nobody actually did that research. So what if we actually can see what color will come back in eight years, what shape will come back in 10 years, that is long-term trends, then we can actually enable the designer to do some action. Uh, last but not least, as I mentioned, it always depends on what the purpose you want to use this data to do what, and then you do the machine learning. Then the second topic is I want to give a, a little bit my exp exploration understanding about the limitation of the image recognition in fashion. To talk about the limitation of image recognition, I would like to introduce how the computers see an image. So pixel is the smallest element uh, present on the screen, the lowest level of uh, the computer vision. As you see a revert E here, it can represent to two dimensions. One is location-wise dimension, and the other one is intensive from 0 to 225 um, grid scale. If we have color picture, then we, we'll have R, red, G, green, B, blue, three different metrics to have it. And then we still use different uh, embedding, encoding, feature extraction, but no matter what, we turn this metric graph only into a long image vector, which means the machine say picture, not in picture format. It's actually in vector format. It's in number. And this number is really depend on how you do the feature engineering. Then how 
computer actually tell two pictures are different. It's about um, um, distance between the image. Here also have the catch. We have different definition of the distance. Here I represent like uh, six most common distance here. Uh, why I'm saying this is you can see this picture here. For humans, it's really easy to tell which one is Jiwawa and which one is Blue Muffin. But this is a great challenge for machine to actually understand which is which. Uh, at the same time, the other thing is this also relate to the picture. This is the same lotus in different resolution. For human, they are the same picture, but for machine, they are totally different because of the resolution. So the point here is uh, machine see the picture different as human, and we have more intuitive um, picture here from fashion why it's matter. So I guess every one of you maybe have this experience. You put some image on the Google. Uh, image search, but you never get whatever you're actually looking for. That's why it's not our engineer is not good enough, they're not doing good work, it's not. It's just some limitation. For example, if we have same dress, have different background, uh, background light, the machine will recognize it differently. If we have same dress, it hang out in, the, in front of the white wall, or it actually wear it by a model, the machine normally say it different. Even uh, for a same dress, it's 3D. If we do different angle for the picture pr perspective, machine will recognize it's different, but we know it's the same. More, uh, it's about even a same dress have different size, we wear on the different model. The machine sometimes treat that different because of the edge. And same dress with one model, and they have different pose, the machine will recognize it differently. That's why I say sometimes if we spend too much time to match the social media's image to the pin, uh, which is um, product catalog in the company, maybe it's not efficient. More often, uh, we talk about uh, we have the same dress. We actually can wear it differently. The machine will treat it differently. And also for seeing a uh, white shirt, if we pair different um, uh, accessory or different other item and we wear it differently, then machine will recognize it differently. So if we make it more structured format, uh, here is the five category from fashion expert perspective, how they actually see a fashion product. Color, textile, pattern, silhouette, and quality. And we see what is the reality of the fashion design and what is the average or normal output from machine learning. So first, to talk about color. Color, according to statistic, more than 65% of the people uh, give their uh, first the choice of buy or not buy and specific product on color. So it's really important. And in the fashion world, there are more than 200 um, color with name, like Valentia, Valentina Pink, uh, Tiffany Blue. However, for the normal uh, like software currently we have, they can only output 6 to 12 colors, whether or not that matter. If I'm today looking for a poppy uh, lipstick with a melon dress, with a burgundy uh, trench coat, I can't do that because it's a shade of red and everything will be tagged in the red. Uh, second, uh, about textile. Textile is about the quality of material. It has internal, external uh, behavior. However, the vision, uh, the visual, uh, behavior or visual character is only occupied 30% of textile. So what, what I mean is, even with the human eyes, you can't know the thickness, the briskness, the movement of the textile, let alone for image recognition. So image recognition can only take a certain part of it. That's why we, out of 90 uh, like normal use material, the image recognition can only output four to six type of the uh, textile with limited um, accuracy, which means it's really hard to tell which is silk, which is synthetic silk, which is cotton, and which is actually polyester. 
to talk about pattern. Pattern is the easiest one for image recognition because they have the uh, sort of really strong shape and color, whatever. But it still uh, also has some disadvantage because you need to tag, you need to find the right person to tag that image, which is relevant for the search for the customer. At the same time, you need to have the right angle and the right coverage of the pattern. Otherwise, you still do, do not have the same thing. I was trying to search for a um, Celine logo, double C, uh, earring from Taobao, which is Chinese um, uh, purchasing uh, website. But what I get is a stop not um, output. So it's really also uh, depend on what is your training data set to output whether or not the pattern is fit or not. Then we move to silhouette. The silhouette is more a big shape of uh, the garment. Uh, we're always talking about the neckline, the sleeve, um, the sh uh, shoulder. Um, and for this one, I can show uh, another, uh, yeah. Uh, a picture here is normally how we define for the design perspective we have more than like 40 different style for a specific sort of short leave or long leave but in the reality in uh, sort of uh, the database or tablet data we only have the short sleeve long sleeve which is in the not so efficient granularity to tag, which is not helpful for designer to understand what will be the trends and is not helpful for the customer to search what the product they actually want. Last but not least is about quality. I would say quality is the biggest part for pricing of the garment. So why there are some white t-shirt only sell five dollars but some of them sell fifty dollars and well some jeans sell two hundred dollars and some only cost twenty dollars it's about material quality it's about sewing tank click it's about how you proper lining and finishing and none of this actually can captured by visual you have to have the expertise to actually examine them on site so the point here is uh, we need to Remember, there's something, uh, there's limitation from image recognition. And don't only rely the image recognition can match or evaluate a certain garment. Um, then what? Uh, maybe forget about uh, accuracy. Uh, in H&M, one of the team to think about uh, well, we have different way to think about it. We treat the picture, only the picture. We are not actually tagging which feature in uh, the product. However, we use a single visit, the sequence you uh, go through a product and find a an positive anchor and a negative anchor. And only based on the color, the, uh, how, how um, machine see the image to find out to create a semantic layer and to find out which product is actually uh, more like to the other one. It's like to teach um, French speaking people to respond properly to a Japanese dialogue without letting him to understand what the sentence is actually about. Um, uh, this is just uh, an inspiration. And also, uh, I would say there's something I would say uh, we are pushing forward uh, about the new uh, focus in fu uh, future. First, uh, I would say it's about uh, combination. Currently, the tagging um, uh, technique for fashion industry is to give a certain item a style tag. However, it's not really accurate because, for, for example, this white shirt is quite versatile. It really depends on how you wear it and how you combine it a different way and you have a style. And that's why uh, in the future it will be, uh, yeah. Uh, and the other thing is for current um, image recognition, normally we have simple um, item recognition in the picture. But now we enable like multi um, item uh, recognition. However, the output is still a single item, the color, the feature, the texture, and so on and so forth. But no one actually tried to understand whether or not this combination relates to a specific style or whether or not this kind of combination is pleased the eyes. So this will be our future focus to actually understand that. 
uh, last but not least, I would say it's about uh, variety. Everyone mentioned personalized is the future of the retail because it generates value. But how the personalization currently doing is normally uh, we based on history, uh, purchasing record, or you viewing history and get something more similar to the most uh, likely you like product. However, whether or not you need the guidance in your most familiar style, no, we are more vulnerable when we want to try something new. That's why I would say like it's about variety. Why not, uh, why not uh, just uh, encourage people to try whatever style they want, but we can recommend the first look they can good on them. Um, yeah, so I would say we, we should support people to multiple styles. Uh, so uh, the takeaway here is style is a customer expression about herself and the new identity. It's easier to actually predict their value proposition in the five years time instead of actually predict the fashion trends. Style reflects the value and the customer choose to believe and the community customer want to be engaged with. Uh, so the last takeaway is use machine learning predict fashion is hard then we should use machine learning to predict customer social belonging and um, focus on identifying multiple objects in the same picture mapping out the relationship between the combination and style is more uh, effective for the recommendation one catch here is if we use uh, the past purchase product uh, to do the next best action, which means we assume today what I want to buy will be relevant to whatever I bought historically. Or we assume when we do a, a, a basket of the buying, everything is related together. But no, it's random. Why not actually study the picture, the combination of the model? Then that will give our more clue what things can combine together. Uh, yeah, last but not least, customer can have multiple fashion style. We should encourage them to try different style and make machine a more supportive way instead of guide way to um, help them to find what they, uh, they're looking for. Uh, thank you. <laughs>